that's my introduction because I want to thank you guys who are tuning in every week. Some of you are tuning in every week, and I really, really, really appreciate you. So without further ado, again, welcome to Music Mondays with Terry Khan, where our guest artist is not beautiful, the amazing, the illustrious Maya Mayo. Hi! Face, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen! Girl! <laughs> Oh, girl, I'm excited to be talking to you. How are you? I'm well. I just want to say happy anniversary. Ah, thank you. I'm for you. I just thank have to so say, like, what a day. I feel a little, like, honored. Like, whoa, like, this is a special day. I mean, like, who else would I have on such a special day, Queen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I I, I am honored. Um, I was scrolling, or is it scrolling, or just hitting the swipe thing for the IG story? And I, to this day, I can't remember who it was, but somebody reposted a singing video of you, right? And okay. I was like, Instagram sucks. <laughs> like, who are, why do you sound like this? Who are you? And I have been hooked. <laughs> Ever since. So I'm, I'm, I know you're from The Voice, and I know you've gotten a lot of recognition from The Voice. I'm going to be honest and say, I found you on Instagram, and I'm really excited that I did. Oh, yay. Thank you. I'm very excited to speak with you, too. And I see all the love, girl. I appreciate it. Girl, <laughs> I, I appreciate you. So let's hop right into it, because, you know, Instagram is disrespectful. They will shut us off at 8, 8, at 8 p.m. So, Listen. <laughs> I know you know. So tell us, who is Maya Mayo Bates? Um, I almost was going to speak in third person, but that's weird. I am, <laughs> she is, I am a singer, dancer, um, Christian, hallelujah, um, just a, 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 a Black woman from Southside Jamaica, Queens, who's been chasing mm -hmm. her trip since literally elementary school. And if you ask any of my friends or family, they would say the I'm just this um, very energetic, silly, but talented, and, and just a fun person. Very fun. <laughs> you look like a lot of fun. And I just want to slip in the fact that I live in Queens, too. So hopefully you'll, like, appease me on a brunch day. Okay, but we can talk about that after off the, <laughs> off the, off the screen. Okay. Just, oh, my God. Yeah. Please <laughs> So you have been, because I usually like to start with going back to the beginning. So you okay. have been singing all your life. Were you like one of those Apollo kids or you had the lead in church every Sunday? Were you one of those kids? <laughs> I definitely started in church singing. Um, wow. That's probably like maybe like five or six. Um, my mom is the positive version of Joe Jackson. So she put myself and all my siblings and a lot of um, auditions, like wow. straight out. Oh, you will miss school tomorrow, honey, because we got this audition. So wow. I want to say, um, it's definitely my singing started with church. Absolutely, um, my mom put us in the choir, um, and then from then on, she just started bringing us to the, uh, these auditions, and it just went off from there. So, how many siblings do you have? I have four. You I have, have four. four. I'm the there's five of you, and all of y'all sing. I'm the just a singing family. Um, our talents range. Like, we all started with the same stuff. We all went to dance school. We were all in the choir. As we got okay. older, the one who kind of stuck to the singing and the acting. Okay. Um, I fake soul dance, I guess. I don't know. My sister... <laughs> <laughs> my sister is is really good at acting. My Two of my brothers... Uh, are more on the well, three, the three of my brothers are more on the musical side. One is an okay. amazing musician, a music producer. He makes a lot of beats. Nice. Um, so there's okay. talent with all of us, but it's just all different. Okay, yeah. okay. Is that the nice way of saying you're the star of the family, Mike? Oh my god! <laughs> no, <laughs> guys, I said it. She did it. I said it was me. You can put it on me. <laughs> no. I don't know why I'm the only, I mean, I think the rest of them, I don't know, they may not have been as like 
interested in in that route right. i, I kind of stuck with it because i just i the passion grew on me and my siblings have other passions in which they have you know more skill in certain areas than i do so i think there's more about the passion that they choose and i just chose to stick in this and i'm i'm still here girl still here uh, Wait, don't, don't leave don't leave don't leave girl don't get yeah, hold on hold on I'm hold trying. on hard <laughs> look i know i know it's not easy and again so in my in my insta stalking i was just like yo this girl's been doing this a long time like you auditioned for um, X back in 2013. Yeah. Right? Mm. And then I'm not sure exactly what you did. I just saw you like on the Tyra Banks show at two, in 2014. <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> That's such a throwback. <laughs> that Girl. was. That happened. The, both of those did occur. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and then you did American Idol in 2014. Yeah. So with American Idol, I didn't get flown out. Like with these shows, there are literally six million auditions before you make any oh, television. <laughs> She's like, right. So uh, some people are not familiar with the process. So yeah, when it yeah. comes to American Idol, I did not get flown out, but I made it as far as the executive producer round, which I That's still me. take pride in. Because so many people worldwide audition for that show. So I took part in that. And I took a few pictures, whatever. Um, with X Factor, I did make it to L.A. And I made it to the very first round before I left the show. Um, so I, I, I was shown very briefly. Um, lastly, with The Voice, that was like the longest I've ever been on any show or whatever. So I take a lot of pride in that as well. And, oh, and did you keep going? Fighting. And, and I feel like the more that I pushed, the further I got. You know what I mean? Right. So... <laughs> well, I'm going to call you Miss, Miss Perseverance because I know, you know, as an indie artist myself, it's, it's not easy. It's, you know, not. it's not easy. So what, what was that thing that made you say, okay, I tried out for American Idol. I tried out for the X Factor. I, I'm doing all these. I've been auditioning all my life. Now you see auditions for The Voice. What, mm -hmm. what is that thing that made you say, I'm going to try this one more time? <laughs> well, that's no so for me, it wasn't like a one more, like I never felt, I never felt like I was ever going to give up. Um, when you yeah. make auditions a lifestyle, it's almost like going to work, oh, time to go to work, time to clock in. So True. when you go to these, ex to these, um, th these experiences with a certain expectation of it's either for me or it's not, and it's a part of right. my deal or weekly, whatever, um, yeah. there's no, there's no um, giving up because there's nothing, because you didn't gain anything to give up. So it's like work to me. So me going to the, the to audition for The Voice, that was my 10th mm. auditioning for The Voice. So, Ooh. yeah. So again, wow. I, I, I know the motion, I know the routine, I know what they want you to sing, and I know what they want you to wear. Um, right. And for the 10th time, I was just like, oh, this is just another audition for me. So right. there was no... I, I never once said, oh, if I don't make this one, I'm done, because it was already part of my lifestyle. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> Thank is you. Amazing. Maya, can you <laughs> hold on for one second? I feel yeah. like maybe Calling you? a mistake here. Hold on one I want to see who's in here who's saying hi. I don't see that I'm live from my Terry Khan page. Oh, the Terry Khan page. Are we not on the Terry Khan page? Huh? Are we not on the Terry Khan page? Yeah, we're, we're on Terry Khan music. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, I don't see that I'm live. But if you, okay, because you know, I have several accounts. As long as I'm on the right one and oh, you saw that. How many accounts? You're not on the Mrs. Adult, but that's my personal page. I just want to make sure. No, I'm on the Terry Khan music. Okay. Then we can keep rolling. Just make yeah. sure. Because I always <laughs> double check on my computer. I don't see the live sign, but if you see it, then I'll trust you. <laughs> I see people <laughs> okay. trying to see Sherry Glover. I see. I just want to, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not on my, my, my personal page. This, oh, this, no, this no, 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 no. what I'm saying. Okay, awesome. So, this, you auditioned for The Voice 10 times. That's my 10th time, yeah. <laughs> if you 
was was there ever a plan B? Like, if you were not a singer, what is there a plan B? Let's start with that. Um, there was never a plan B for me. There was always um addition. Like, I'm gonna do this and like there was always I'll do this job and sing and do this job and still do performances. It was never a plan B. Um, with me, and I don't know if this you know comes across the wrong way but i feel like the type of gifts that i have like yeah. i would feel, i would feel like i'm really playing myself if i ever stopped because i always oh, felt I agree huh i you said agree you, yeah and it's like you get to a place and it's like you can offer me the highest paying job but i'm like whatever i do it has to be in addition to my arts and crafts because I, I literally can't stop doing it because the arts is there. It's twofold. It's like one, yeah. you're creating, and it's a self expression. And the other is you're giving to the, to the audience. Yeah. So that's the part that I would feel bad for. Like I could sit in my room and sing and it would feel amazing, but I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but then there's a part of, of you giving, you know what I'm saying? Giving of yourself and, and hearing, certain feedback like girl like I was stressed and out and I heard your music and, ah, 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 or my mother was almost oh. dying so when you hear like huge feedback like that then you really are held to a certain level of accountability to keep going so again there was never a plan B for me it was only like all right well if I don't bring in enough money or whatever I'll do this but I will never stop um and most, most artists always have a side hustle from from local artists who are bartenders or whatever, do hair wow. make the people like, you know, Rihanna who has five different businesses and makeup and beauty and skin and lingerie and Kanye yes. West. So I don't yes. think there's a plan B, I think for most true artists because you can't really truly give it up. There's always like a, I don't know, maybe a part B. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Because I, I heard part of your story was you were on your way to becoming a police officer. Yes, that? yes, yes, yes. So what happened with that was I my, I come from a family of law enforcement. And that was okay. my my story for the boys, my, my background story. You know, they was in the right. story chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was the one that made the most sense. So I was a police cadet, um, which okay. is an amazing. Uh, you, have you heard of that program? No. The police cadet corps? Um, the police cadet corps is basically you're you're ba a baby police officer for college students, okay. and get paid like you know fifteen dollars an hour to be a full time student and work at a precinct while you study. So it's almost like work study within okay. NY. And the idea is, when you graduate from college, boom, you're a police officer. Okay. Because while you're in college, you're taking the agility exam, you're doing training, you're doing all that. So the idea is, as soon as you graduate, you become a police officer. So when I graduated, right. I said, well, this was cute. <laughs> but. This was fun. <laughs> and, and God and you in the back. But mother needs to hit the stage. Okay? On, <laughs> <laughs> so when. I love it. When, and let me say something. My father, retired police officer. My sister's currently a police officer. My mother currently works for NYPD. Wow. I had a cousin that's retired CEO. Another cousin that's a retired um, detective. Like, when I tell you I come from a family, honey. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, it wasn't necessarily, again, a plan B for me. I think that season of my life, I was a, a college student hustler. Like, look. What, where can I work that's part time but still makes good money and I can make my own hours and Girl. you know I could turn it down or I might change my mind when I'm graduating and say okay um, and you know at the time I was just it was the scheduling that made me nervous I was like as a performing artist mm -hmm. I need to have as much flexibility as possible and there's no such thing with NYPD it's like oh we need you to work no. overtime right? right we need to sit on this corner for 48 hours and I was like <laughs> right right to go to an audition she has to go and y'all gonna let that y'all gonna find <laughs> wow that's but, amazing um that if i was not if i literally never sung never danced never acted nothing i would 1000 percent be working for nypd undoubtedly 100 percent wow 100 yeah, percent if i literally had no gift or anything like that i could see me easily because it's a it's, a, it's in my family 
Like I could one hundred percent see me doing that. And it's, it's funny me saying that here, here now today, July 20, 2020, um, because <laughs> I feel a certain way. You know, about <laughs> yeah, but you'll be one of the good ones because you're so sweet. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, one that I'll probably be one of the fired one at the fired ones at this point. I that I believe. Because I'll be out there protesting. They'll be like, Officer Bates. <laughs> right. You're still here working in the pizzas. I'm like, well, I don't well, know. You're right. Right. So back then, you know, I won't reveal uh, my old age, but back then when I was graduated from college, it was another thing. Oh, like, I could be a cop. Blah, blah, blah. But today, honey, I don't know about that. I understand. <laughs> I she said, <laughs> and I, I really appreciate um, the fact that you know you use your platform to speak out a lot against um, against the injustice, you know, which is which is very admirable. <clears throat> we were at the same rally the other day. I hashtag I stand for Jennifer. That was amazing that you were there. Yeah, I heard that story, and I was just, my husband and I were like, okay, what time is it? Where are we? Because why? Yeah. Why? Yeah, that's I am definitely an advocate, honey, for social injustice. Yeah, I have to be there, and I live in Queens. Do you live in Queens? I do. That's why I mentioned that we have it's to brunch. do brunch. Would you say? That's why I mentioned that we have to do brunch. And oh yeah, because yeah, you. Well, we'll talk offline. But anyway, yeah, because yeah, you can't tell <laughs> me no because it's on the <laughs> internet. If you're like, oh, she's mean. She said no, so I trap you. <laughs> <laughs> oh Yo, honestly yeah that that was right around the corner so i was like i gotta go yeah I gotta go there that's awesome so what um what advice would you give to other independent artists what advice would i give to other independent artists um definitely um be very you know persistent and consistent um, with mm. your journey. I would say, um, I would say solidify um, like some type of, some type of like whatever brings you peace and faith that you're gonna need along the way on your journey. Like for me, I'm a believer, I have a Christian upbringing. So I always turn to that if I need to lean on something. So. Right. For someone else, it might be, I don't know, yoga, or for someone else, it might be, I talk to my grandma, or I pray with my whatever. So I would say to make sure you concretely have that in your back pocket, because it's a lot of down days. Um, and like I told you, with these auditions, I've auditioned for The Voice 10 times, I've auditioned for American Idol, maybe like, maybe like five times. Really? Um, and X yeah, that's fact, I've, I, that, that's my lifestyle. And I've gone to the city six million times to audition for a six million Broadway play. So yeah. with with all of these auditions in, a, in an industry that um, has a very small percentage of people that make it, you know, and, and make it in the sense of you're able to live off of your talent, right? right? Mm -hmm. So in that industry, there's mad rejection. There's mad rejection. And you have yeah. to, again, that little faith or whatever that is to you in your back pocket because mm -hmm. that rejection is it's, it's that is consistent <laughs> talk it's about consistency. it's um the rejection it's a lot and and you gotta have that that strong backbone or that thick skin to deal with it um mm -hmm. and i feel like once you have that down pack again it just feels like a job like oh another audition that's it. Have your plan. Your off and keep going. Right. Yeah. Your plan, your faith, and and in between, absolutely sharpen your skills. Like if you need to take classes or yeah, whatever, whatever that means for you. If you're a dancer, make sure you keep going to dance classes. Um, so in between, keep getting better, improving your skill and your craft. Right. That's right. pretty much it. Awesome. Awesome. Now, one one thing that I absolutely love um, love about you as an artist is I feel like you don't sound like anyone else. Like you have a really distinct tone. Uh, oh, thank you. Because know? yeah, that's you're what I'm going for. Okay, well, mission accomplished. Uh, you know, some singers, they're like, oh, I can tell you listen to whoever, whoever, whoever. Yeah. I'm like, no, this, yeah. you, you really stand out. 
Um, so who who are your musical influences? Like who did you grow up listening to? So I have to grab my pearls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who are my musical influences? Um, the first person that always comes to my mind is Stevie Wonder. Ooh, yeah, yeah. He is his his music has always been like food. You know what I mean? And not just like oh a sandwich. I mean something savory. Oh, something food. like like soul food. It's like yes. it melt. I it agree. almost melts. God. CV Wonder stylistically and just his voice, his writing. Yes. It's just like ugh. And then, like you said, like that distinct, like, you know it's Stevie when you hear it. Like, there's no other, oh, who's that? Undoubtedly, yeah, yeah. Undoubtedly. Uh -huh. um, who else besides Stevie? Um, for years, I kind of stalked Melanie Daniels. Oh, you know Melanie? <laughs> Everyone in New York knows Melanie Daniels. <laughs> I stalked said, her. I was at the village underground, like, <laughs> right, oh, right. Yeah. Well, you know, because you you're a musician, but um, She's amazing. some people I, I get a few I get a few people that say they don't know, but I stalked her for maybe a decade. Um, I've I've lightened up, I've lightened up, but for, <laughs> there was a period, there was a period that I was just like studying her her singing and her sound and just mm -hmm. watching her and just looking her up and studying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, definitely Stevie Wonder, Melanie Daniels. Do you attend Allen, by the way? Huh? Do you attend Allen? No. However, I attend Christian Cultural Center in Brooklyn. Okay. But Allen is literally so close to my house that as a teen, um, just me and my laziness, I would frequent Shekinah, which is yeah, the youth. Yeah. Um, and I would go to both. Like, my church had three services. So I would... I would go to their service and then like go to my last service. Like I would literally go to church twice every Sunday and gotcha. I going there so often that I became like friends and almost best friends with the staff and the choir mm -hmm. and the musicians and they have yeah. some amazing, amazing talent. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, throughout the church. So I became just friend, like still friendships from, you know, Shekinah and Allen. And um, okay. so, so people thought that I was like, on staff, I'm like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I maintain my loyalty, but um, right. it was there. And all my other friends were like, oh, we're going to Chicago. I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. Let me get a ride. Right. So, um, they're definitely my honorary, like, <laughs> honorary. <laughs> <trait. Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So sorry to interrupt. You said Stevie Wonder, Melanie Daniels, and then oh my god, as a kid, I literally. By mistake, studied Monica, Brandy, and Destiny's Child. When I say by mistake, mistake, was huh? That was a great mistake, right? And I found my. I, I honestly want to like give my my homage in terms of like me knowing how to do my runs and riffs, which yeah. a lot of people like know me for because of like yeah. Monica, um, Beyonce, um, and Destiny's Child. They did all those like Destiny's yeah, Child. Yeah, 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 yeah long runs and I I didn't care about singing my mother cared about her more than I did you know like oh sing, 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 sing in the choir and I was just like I don't care but I would listen <laughs> and I would mimic it and copy it like oh oh I did wow. it just oh oh well I want some cereal now like I didn't realize <laughs> I was literally like seven or eight doing like ah, and she would do it and I'm like ah, ah, and I'm like oh cool so I'm recess now like not <laughs> That it was like I had a skill in listening and repeating, and I still do that now. Um, so I listened to them as a kid: Monica, Brandy, The Destiny's Child, The, the Boy Is Mine. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then I got oh, as I got older, I I, I kind of got into the soul. I I loved India Irie, Lauren Hill, oh. Jasmine Sullivan, and I kind of just lived there for a while. You know, so that's pretty much it. Definitely Stevie. I think he's number one. Well, you done named uh, all of the greatest singers, so I understand why you sing the way you do. <laughs> this this I, in terms of like co co um complexity with their voices and styles and just 
Yes. Like, why can you do that? You know? <laughs> and do you play do you play any musical instruments? Oh my God. Sorry, Khan. I'm so sorry. I don't and I feel so no, guilty. That's... No, I feel guilty because I've been taking piano lessons for like fifty years. I am <laughs> I'm so guilty and embarrassed. I, I should know how to play. I should <laughs> And I used to play p um violin. My all my wow. siblings because they taught it at school and I did concerts and everything. Um and then later years later I took piano lessons and I'll be good if I practice. So that's the thing. You literally have to practice maybe an hour a day. If you let that joint go, I'm like, wait, where's the middle C? I literally forget everything. <laughs> so short answer to your question. Oh, I don't play no instruments, girl. <laughs> We have the same, we have the same testimony, sis. I, um, you know, it's like when you're younger and your mom, like, kind of, I was forced to do music as I was younger. Mm -hmm. So after I got to a certain age, I was like, I just want to go. Oh, wait, hold on. Time, you I got a phone call. Am I back? Oh, you got a phone call. Okay, yes, you're sorry. back. Can you the Saints? No, not to call me Monday night at 7. Sorry. So... <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, I got to that age where I was just like, I want to go outside and play with my friends. I'm really tired of just like, yeah. And I tell you, that is one of the biggest regrets. Like, because every time I pay a keyboard player, I'm like, dang, I could have done this. Myself. And my mom, <laughs> she's so wonderful. She she got a um a piano and everything while I was you know taking my lessons. And she still has a piano, and I could yeah. I have access to it, but. I don't know. And now I'm addicted to nails. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody. Somebody. I think I think it's so cool. That's that's like on my bucket list to really go back there because I feel like as a singer, if you can just understand the notes and the intricacies yeah. of the in between. Or like you don't need this. I need this. Because you you're good. I need this. I need this to learn need the intricacies. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So you know, and you are, you profess your faith. Oh, stop, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, Maya. Uh, <laughs> you are, um, you, you are a bold, a bold believer, you know, in Christ, which is great. You're not one of those. Okay, we'll just leave it there. You're Ooh. a bold believer in Christ. Hallelujah. And <laughs> so when it comes, when it comes to your music, um, are you going to be a Christian recording artist? Or are you doing secular? Like, where where are we going? I, are you going in? I've always um, more so leaned towards like inspirational. Okay. Um, so almost like a hybrid, like never ever raunchy lyrics, ever no chicken, whatever. Not saying you know. I mean, if that's your flow, go with it. God right, bless. Go it. That's just not me. But I also never felt inclined to do 100% gospel. Um, okay. That's that, that lane. Um, it's I don't know. I I always felt like um, my audience is very wide. Yeah. Um, and when you choose the gospel lane, th that's your only audience. Right. Um, so I come from a multifaceted world of arts. I come from musical theater, and I was in dance school, and I was acting, yeah. and audience is so bold, uh, so so wide that um, I love the idea of spreading the gospel and, and, and being, you know, more so giving a positive message about love or light or right. friendship. Um, and the air is pretty much it. I never zeroed in on strictly gospel. Okay. And that's <laughs> <laughs> Like when I'm doing a play, um, I pay attention to the message that it sends. Like I, uh, a few years ago, I played Sister Dolores in Sister Act, um, and that's not a gospel play. It's it's a right. comedy play about like hilarious nuns. But there's yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. message about love. There's a message about friendship. Um, but you know, Dolores, she's she you know in the beginning she's smoking cigarettes, she's, she's right. cussing. <laughs> um, so thing, me personally as an artist, I don't. I don't like kind of limit myself to just gospel. Like as long as I'm giving right. some type of message, you know what I'm saying, while still maintaining my reputation, that's that's my my goal. Cool, 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 
awesome, 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 awesome. What is what's next for you in terms of projects? Like, um, we know you have recordings from The Voice. That is your song. <laughs> I, I like it better than the original. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody yeah. says that. Like how? <laughs> it's just amazing. Like everything, the production on that song. I'm I'm just like big on like cohesiveness with your vocal uh, choices and the music. And I was listening to it. I was just, you got the sync face the whole time. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bands that I, 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 I would have said the band for that too. But the way <laughs> you flowed over them too, like that in itself, that, that, yeah. thank you. Itself. So um, are you, are you in the process of <laughs> recording your own stuff? Do you write? What, what's your next so I'm move? literally in the process right now of working on a Black Lives Matter project. Um, with, yeah, I I never in my life cried while writing a song. I that's never happened to me. I'm like verse one. I'm writing, writing. I'm like, this is messed up. I'm like, hey, my wow. And it was so emotional for me. And then I wrote it like um, I don't know, like two weeks ago. Um, but yeah, that's right. that's what I'm currently working on. Hoping so the project is it's in including I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it because I'm doing it with my brother, but you guys will see it pretty soon. But <laughs> we're working on the Black Lives Matter project where, which is going to incorporate a lot of singers. Almost yeah. if you lean on me, the Kirk Franklin song. Yeah. Like, oh beautiful. Right. So something of that nature. We got okay. my brother, he um before COVID, um, was touring for years on, on Broadway doing The Lion King. So he got some of his Lion King buddies to dance. We got people from American Idol, people from The Voice, um, oh people God. from The Four. Like, so we just gathered all these singers. So it's a little complicated because we got, everybody has to record on their own. We got to, you know, we're yeah. quarantined. So yeah, you got to yeah. find your own bit. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't take too long to complete. Um, okay. If I could put like a, a a date, I'm hoping we can release it like the beginning of August, prayerfully. But I just want to say, please keep a look. Be so beautiful, and the name of the song is called "I Can't Breathe." Um, and everyone's gonna be portraying, you know, this victim that died and that victim that died, and just oh. through dance and movement and. It's gonna be. I feel like I'm oversharing right now. He's gonna kill me if he sees this, but it's okay. Um, sorry, bro. It's me. I projected. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> I know. Sorry, to it, brother. <laughs> if you're watching this, don't tell him. <laughs> don't tell him I'm sharing. But it's fine because people should be. Um, they're gonna be surprised either way. But that's what I'm working on right now. Um, when I do write music, it's not very often. Unfortunately, I just. Okay. That's a skill. But like I'd rather pay someone to write me a song than me do it because I don't know I'm very insecure but whenever I do projects um with my brother I don't know what I don't know if it's he and I but I just become I don't know so when he came to me with this idea the idea started flowing and, and the, wow. the melody and it's been quite a while since I've written a song and um and I'm really excited about this I'm really excited excited about I got goosebumps when you started talking. You did. Yeah, <sighs> seriously. Seriously. Yeah. It, it's just it, this is I think now is the perfect time to if you're an artist man now is the time to really create. Like if you're everyone is feeling like everyone, everyone like everyone is you if you're not you're not human I'm sorry. Listen, you know, I, I was saying to someone the other day that, you know, every every watch night service, every December 31st, every pastor comes up with this thing, right? That's never applicable to every single person in this world, yeah. right? But December 31st, 2019, everyone spoke about Vision 2020. And this is the first time that it's been applicable. Because if you're not Woo! now, honey... The vision is clear. We have seen, <laughs> we have seen so much, yeah. you know, and it's 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 really woken us up from from Corona straight to like racial injustice. It's just yeah. like yeah, oh, this is what's happening in our world. 
So you're so right. This is the time where we really need to like dig inside ourselves and to create. Yes. Besides the fact that as musicians too, like music is healing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, God knows we need some healing right now. Yeah, so absolutely. An encouragement. We need everything. Yeah. We need <laughs> everything. So true. Woo! I'm excited. I'm excited for that project. Um, I'm excited too. And after that, will you like for next year be working on your full life? So I'm okay. So on the well, not acting. Yeah, I guess it is acting. On the acting side, I do have something lined up that I am not clear to talk about just okay. yet. That's but cool. yeah, you know how these things go, girl. Yeah. Uh, that means it's good. <laughs> yeah. Listen, so that acting wise, I fingers crossed should be doing a show uh, hopefully this this um, fall. Okay. So by the summer, I want to do this Black Lives Matter and push this uh, piece. And then hopefully by fall, I'll be able to do. Um, and if this one in particular doesn't come through, I'll tell you, like I tell everybody else, I am an audition whore, honey. Right? I, you have to be. <laughs> let me tell you something. There's always something. Um, always. But even during quarantine, I'm like, who's, who's, sub like, who's, who's holding auditions? And I've been submitting a lot of tapes. Like, I can't, yeah. but people are making video submissions, and I've been yeah. doing that. You know what I'm saying? I don't always share it with people. I, I keep my auditions private. I'd rather say when I've gotten or landed yeah, something. Yeah, right. But you best right. believe I have been. So um, I, I know for a fact that I'm going to be doing something, something this fall. Okay. Um, okay. I just need to be on a stage. I got I, I, I just got that itch. I got that itch. Oh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hit the stage, man. I understand. <clears throat> I've been talking a lot, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for for staying with us uh, to hear. If you haven't heard about Maya, just it's to stalk her like I did, and you won't. <laughs> I promise you, if you guys have any questions, just hit that box with the, uh, yeah. the question mark in it, and I will definitely um, screen it. And then ask the questions. We usually have a lot of independent artists that tune in. Mm. That tune in. So, guys, please definitely ask your questions. Um, so, I want to get a little personal with you. you know. Ooh, per let, me, oh, let me close my jacket now. <laughs> oh, let me get to myself. Let me gather myself. <laughs> you are hilarious. I hope that your own talk show was in the works too because your lives, I'd be on the lid door. I'd be like, Lord Jesus, just somebody, somebody pick this girl up, please. <laughs> you are hilarious. Um, Thank you. What, what has been your greatest obstacle so far? My greatest obstacle. Your greatest obstacle in life so far and how have you overcome? My greatest obstacle in life, um, mm -hmm. my greatest obstacle, I, that's hard for me to answer. Okay. Cause I almost want to, it's not like I haven't had obstacles i just feel like life is good <laughs> oh no, no no i just feel like they're all the same size <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm okay. like life is like rough but i handle it really well because i anticipate certain struggles um which which essentially does make life good if i because some crazy ish has happened i just feel like well look god <laughs> right i ain't got time lord right right Jesus, I mean, I think I think that my greatest achievements were my greatest obstacles because I had to go over a hump to get those. You Ooh, know what I mean? Say that. Talk about that. <laughs> that was good. You know what I mean? I, I think my greatest, so if I talk about my greatest achievements, right, like the, the first public competition I've ever done was the Steve Harvey radio show, and they oh, flew wow. me out to Vegas. Uh, remember he did that on, on uh, I think it was WBLS. He was like doing this thing and it yes. flew me. I was really young. That was my first. Like, oh, I'm being flown somewhere. Oh my and, God, that, that's big. 
It was, and the 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 prize was like you get signed to I don't know Def Jam or one of these things. Like a ten thousand dollars, they're all the same. Um, right. Just me and like six other competitors, and I lost to some to some kid who, in my opinion, like he was okay, but. His family was from there, and they were doing it based off of like crowd class. So I was like, "Well, I'm oh, from New York," oh. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I did very well. Um, and I was like, "Maya, you girl, like there was only six people." Um, but I was very young. I was very nervous, and I was just insecure. And right. I just remember being very sad, like, "Oh, I didn't win that." So I think that again, like I told you earlier, like every time I moved close, like after that, I tried out for. Um, I think American Idol, and I made it as far as the executive producer rounds, where they had all right. the cameras. That I, and then X Factor, I got flown out to LA, and I made it to the right. very first round where I got eliminated, and then The Voice. And I'm like, every time I left these other places, like it was like sad, and I would be like really discouraged. But then I would overcome by keep going. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, and I think that all my obstacles, because I am an artist, were art related. You know, if that makes any sense. Like, of course, I mean, school wasn't an obstacle for me. Like, because that's I don't. I mean, school is school. Um, I I don't have you know children or anything like that. I've never been divorced. I've never been married. So I think all of my obstacles and all that stuff is always related to like, I don't know, my my the things that I've done artistically. Career um, Okay. Yeah, you know, does that make sense? <laughs> it makes total sense because, I mean, pe a lot of people can't handle rejection. Rejection is, is that's a big thing. <laughs> you yeah. Know, and you're like, you're like the most gorgeous bouncing bag that I've ever seen. You're like, boom, and we're back. Boom, and we're back. Like, you just keep coming back. <laughs> you know, you said you uh, auditioned for the voice 10 Oh, after the first one, I would have been like, you know what, Laura, I think this is not your will. I just don't, <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> oh, I've seen that. And I try to, I try to encourage people. I remember I had, if you've, if you've insta-stalked me truly, then you've seen the six million hairstyles I've had. I've had short blonde pixie. I've had I pink. You have to braise the pink, the purple. One time, I'm like, it was maybe my sixth time audition for The Voice. I was in the bathroom. I had my little audition wig off. And I took up my wig. I was like, da 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 da. Trying to go back to New York because it was like probably in Virginia. I don't know one right. of these places. Filled. And they, these girls, <laughs> these girls in the bathroom would look at me like I was like I lost my mind because they probably took it as I was taking it hard. Like I'm out here taking my wig and like everything's okay. I'm fine. But I was truly fine. Wow. And they were discouraged. Like I can't even believe that. Like I sounded good. I'm like you probably sounded amazing. You probably did sound amazing, but sometimes these auditions aren't about how you sound. Sometimes they right. So if you yeah. had three winners, three three seasons in a row, and you're an amazing country singer, you might not make it past the first audition. These are things that I've learned yeah. throughout the audition journey. So people are like, oh, I sound good. I sound I'm like, yeah, you probably sound incredible. Amazing. But you might not have the look. Maybe the last right. person just like you. Maybe you look too much like, you know, the last winner. So, exactly. I, you know, I did another audition for um, Dora the Explorer was going on um, Broadway. And I made it really far. I made it to like the third callback. Um, and I was like, for the, for the Wicked Witch or one of these little silly things. And right. it was me and one other girl, one Asian girl. And she like almost started crying. And I was like, all right, I got to go. I'm going to go do some shopping. And she's like, you know what I'm shopping? I was like, sis, let me say something. You can either be out here slitting your wrist or you can, like, you got, you have to keep going. You yeah. cannot let action stop you. Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's like, per perhaps, you know, you need to read up on some stories where Michael Jordan was rejected. Michael Jackson was rejected. Very Whitney good. Houston got booed. Lauren right. Hill got booed. Like, maybe you need some reminders right. because who who makes it straight through their path besides Beyonce, who had very wealthy parents? But who yeah, makes it? Talk about that. <laughs> like, you 
wealthy parents and they but perform every day. <laughs> but who who's at the bottom and not going through mad rejection, girl? Right. Do your thing. Take off your wig, shake her off, put her in the bag, and go to your next audition. Her, I love it. Shake her <laughs> off. Yeah, it's, it's part of the process. It's part right. of the process. Absolutely. And like you said, like you, for this, honey, for this thing, you got to have a strong back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even, even when you do get in, right, mm -hmm. these same people that, woo, the next day they just like, who are you? Or boo. So even to when, once you get there to maintain that, right? Uh, like my people are mean. Easier to obtain than it is to maintain. Oh. It's everything is yeah. Doctor A R Bernard, let me give him credit. I see my cousin hey, watching. Doctor A R Bernard, like, <laughs> yeah, he, right. oh, people don't like to give him his credit now. Don't 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 misquote. Anyway, um, <laughs> so my thing is, you know, the journey is hard, yeah. and be very fooled if you think it's going to be peaches and cream. You're going to be very discouraged. Right. right. Point blank, period. And I, I just want to reiterate something that you said um, for our listeners. Like, there is, there's a package situation mm -hmm. here. Like, oh, okay. so you, there, I have, I, I know people that can outsing Beyonce, but you know, you might not look like her, especially if you are <laughs> in the, um, Especially if you're going in like the secular, the secular world, like there, there is, there is an entire package. You know, there's that it factor. We were talking to one of our guests about the it factor that mm -hmm. you might have a fantabulous voice, but you have no presence. You, know? mm -hmm. <laughs> you have no personality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think it's important to, and that's and that's why I'm glad that I'm an audition queen because I learned about all that stuff. <laughs> right. I gotta go. Like, I remember I was fiending, and I'm still fiending, for someone to cast me as uh, Eveline from The Wiz. Um, oh, because yeah. I would register. First of all, I love villains. I want to play Ursula and the Mermaid, but they only okay. cast white people on Broadway as Ursula. I don't know why. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, so <laughs> Eveline, her register is, like, very low. And like yeah, mine. yeah, yeah. And I went to some, you know, audition, and, and I got a call back which is a great sign each time. Yes. Um, I went to my callback. They was like, you sound amazing. I'm over here <clears throat> growling and everything. And they was like, you're too small. But I'm, like, but yeah. I'm too fat and Dorothy. So, I mean, I mean, fat in the, in the, in the um, entertainment world. Like, if yeah. you're bigger than size six, you're fat. Let's be clear. So, yeah. again, going back to that package, you might be perfect in a, in a you got to know um, where you want to go, where you want to end up. You know what I'm saying? Because you might not have, you might have a voice better than Beyonce, and you might be flat on stage, but they may, may need a flat affect in the color purple, where people are playing, you know, unprivileged individuals. Like, you might be perfect there. Right. And they got some singers on the color purple, honey. Um, so yeah, I, I said, that's why I got some friends of color purple. So what you <laughs> they got some so I said I have some friends of color purple. That Same is for real. Me yeah. Too. Um, and so my thing is just know your lane and know where you fit in. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. In a place, but they don't want no skinny girls. I feel like when I was watching the color purple, all oh, them girls are thick. Woo! <laughs> like, Come on, right. uh, ox and macaroni and cheese right. and <laughs> skinny girls. But purple. Let's be clear. And a lot of girls are out here like, oh, let me. Let me drop 60 pounds so I can make it on Broadway. I'm like, well, you might be a good be fit somewhere. Bro. Yeah, a, there's a check waiting. Oh, oh right. <laughs> I, love I love it, I love it. Well, my last question before I'm gonna ask you to sing. Like I 48 bars for us. Um, <laughs> 48, 56. I mean, whatever. You know, you take it. your choice. So, <laughs> who, who, who do you desire to work with, like, in the future? Which artist is on your bucket list? On my bucket list, who do I desire to work with? 
Um, I guess I should have an answer already, huh? <laughs> Who do I want to work with? Um, God. Who you gonna, who, who, who's gonna uh, make you scream when they call? Ah, they call me! <laughs> well, I have, at this point, if the mailman call me, child, I'll be... <laughs> okay, let's talk about that other topic, honey. Um, <laughs> listen. Uh, <laughs> I would like to be with someone who I would have a because I well anyway I would like to be I would like to work with someone who I would have a good time with so I'm trying to think of not just talent but someone who has a great personality yeah. who I could just like vibe with right. um I don't know this is really weird but for some reason I feel like I'm thinking of two people. I'm thinking of Amarion and Chris Brown. Okay. It's weird because I've stalked Amarion for years as well. Mm -hmm. And I like his down to earth. I, I need, like, when we're not off the stage, we got to be like, all right, we getting Popeye, y'all. Right. I need to feel like if I'm touring with you, I need to feel at home. And he mm -hmm. gives me that. And he's yeah. also a Scorpio like me. Um, and Chris Brown, drugs aside, I feel like he gives me a lot of um, like, <laughs> like down to earth, like funny, like I need humor, I need laughter, right. kiki. All right, guys, that was a great rehearsal. See you later. Right. Um, some people are really uptight and I actually have, um, well, let me not speak too soon, but there's opportunity to, you know, do the whole Kanye West uh, Sunday service. Sunday I'm like, service? What, is, well, what is it like? Lord, forgive me. What would that be like working with this wonderful yet mentally ill individual? So, you know, when these people do call you, like, do I want to work with you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think about how you do your off time. Like, you're talented, blah, 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 great. But, how, like, what's your character like? Mm. You know what I mean? Of course. Oh, you know, yeah, that's pretty much all. Okay. I can't even so right say child. Chris what? Brown and Omarion. Yeah, that's so random because I don't even really listen to their music, but mm -hmm. I, their personalities give me like like chill down to earth. But no drugs. Just keep me away from that. Drugs <laughs> aside. <laughs> you know, call me when we're all gathering together eating Popeyes after rehearsal. I'm down for it. Okay. So like after they have the munchies. Okay. So that's <laughs> Yes, but y'all got the munchies. All right. Okay. Let's now, food. now we're good. That means the acts have been done already. So let's go eat. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Now I just, I'm sorry. I got it. I gotta hear the voice. This is the voice, ladies and gentlemen. Please bless us. Please, so, please, please. Thing. Oh God. Oh God. I'm nervous. I'll give you maybe eight bars. Eight and a half. Um, 18. Okay. Let me do, do, have you heard The Cure? It's old, but it's a, an original song for me. I'll, I'll sing the Okay. Um, I'll do a verse and a chorus. That's okay. easy. Um, have you ever felt like you needed someone to help you? To carry on, to live you on. And we are frozen, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no! Maya, come back. I hope it's not my internet. Are you guys still there with me? Because uh, I feel like the entire show, my internet has been a little scratchy. No more disease, my remedy. You are, you are the cure. All right, that's all I got. That's all I got. So, okay, <laughs> so you're going to kill me because you were frozen for like a whole minute. No! Oh, you got, look, look at the comments. Yes, yeah, she's frozen. She, I, I didn't make this up. 
No, dang. All right, I'll but after the first two lies, I was just like, why did I freeze? The devil is the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. <laughs> so that means you have to sing it just one more time. Okay. One more, one more time before they kick us off. Please. <laughs> chorus. Okay. I'll do the chorus. Okay. You are the cure, my healer, I'm restored. I've given you my mind, my body, soul. You took care of me. I've been set free. I have died. Then you came and gave me life. Now I'm forever changed. There's no more disease. My remedy, you are, you are the cure. Now, please tell me I didn't freeze a second time. <laughs> you didn't freeze it. Yay! That's, that's an amazing song. You are the Thank cure. You. Your thank voice, you. That's your spirit. So You're so beautiful inside and out. And thank you again for this honor and opportunity. I don't take this lightly, y'all. I really don't. I know we're quarantined, but like you could be like writing a whole song with Chris Rock right now. So <laughs> I thank <laughs> thank you so much for being my guest for Music Mondays with Terry Khan. Those of you who are tuned in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you set your alarms for every Monday at 7 p.m. Yeah, where we get up close and personal with your favorite artist. Maya, have an amazing night. Thank you. You too. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. I love you guys. <laughs>